Greetings and welcome to the Southside Help Center show. First, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. This is a live call-in show. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please give us a call here at the station. The number is 312-1060. Um, give us a call here if you have any questions. Um, again, this is like so super, super duper vital. Um, and I'm so grateful to be here because we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. And, and as we continue to move forward at the Southside Help Center, we really are looking forward to... Um, so many of our other community partners getting get involved. We're going to talk about a few things that we got going on. Um, first, let me just pay homage to our founder, Ms. Betty Smith, founded the agency 30 years ago. So we're still going 30 years strong, and as well as Vanessa Smith, who is currently our executive director at Southside Help Center. Uh, you can always reach us at www.southsidehelp.org. You can go to our website, check out the different programs that we have. Um, and see which ones interest you the most. We have after-school programs as well as mentoring programs, uh, HIV prevention and education programs. We also do street and community outreach. Today we're going to talk about two of the programs that I think are so vital for us to have. One is the mentoring. Mentoring um, is so important to us here in the city of Chicago. Um, the reason I say that we're going to talk about the two programs because oftentimes one go hand in hand with the other. We're talking about our street and community outreach um, and we're talking about our mentoring program. Uh, when we talk about the street and community outreach, first let me say um, Southside Health Center has been providing HIV prevention and education for the last 30 years um, and we continue to do so. One of the things that make us most um, important or make it most important is that we're able to um, go directly to the people that we're servicing. We have since affiliated with a, a um, World Health Organization, which is AHF, and through them, they've allowed us to even make ourselves that much stronger and reach that much further. Currently, we have two different clinics where we're talking about HIV prevention and education. We get people tested. If somebody comes back positive, within 72 hours of being tested, we'll have them uh, engaged into a clinic. We'll have them, um, an appointment set for them. We have a location on 26th in Michigan, as well as a location in Hyde Park right above Mellow Yellow. So we have two different clinics that we're working with so that when we do identify HIV positive clients, we can get them right into treatment. Um, it is so vital that we continue this work. And as we can talk about HIV prevention, I got to say it's, it's because when the light is not shined on HIV as bright as it used to be. So, so oftentimes we think that HIV, either the epidemic has gone away or either the numbers have gone down. And the reality of it is, is the numbers have not gone down, the epidemic has not gone away, the light is not quite as bright as it used to be. Um, don't really know why that is, but let me say that we do HIV prevention, education, and testing every day of the week. And we are constantly finding individuals who are testing positive for HIV. We're constantly getting them into treatment and care. That's just to say that the disease has not went anywhere and that people are still getting impacted and infected. There's a number of different things that people can do to avoid this. So we want to make sure that we talk about our HIV prevention and education, that we cover those bases. And, and one is how don't you get it? We know how don't you get it? No sex, no drugs, no problem. Um, if, you, if you practice abstinence, if you're not, not using any type of substance, then of course that puts you um, at a very safe level. Also, if you engage in a monogamous relationship where there's no HIV um, present and individuals trust one another, it is so vital that we do trust. Um, also, we talk about prevention. Well, what is prevention? We talk about prevention being condoms. We're out there every single day passing out condoms. And again, no, condoms are not 100% effective, but they are 99% effective when used correctly. So that brings your risk down. And again, we have to talk about risk reduction. Um, even when the fact that so many people know that HIV exists, but they still take those chances. They still take those risks. Um, I had a young brother tell me um, he started out with a condom. He said the second time he didn't use it because he was too lazy to get up and get it. And it was that simple of a thing, and, and oftentimes we can say, yeah, well, maybe not for me or not for you, but you would be really surprised the number of individuals who engage in unsafe behaviors um, if they don't have a condom. And that's why we say condom distribution, we, we, we push that because, again, we um working with the city on the condom distribution program, and we're a hub for the south city, south side of the city. So we often talk about those individuals who may need condoms, or whether it's a barber shop, a beauty shop, or a restaurant, or whatever it is. By all means, contact the agency, um, get some of the condoms, you can put them in your facility or whatever and, and help us to um, reduce the risk of HIV impact and infection. It's so vital that we as a community 
come together to save ourselves. So it's important that those um, community residents or those community businesses uh, check with us and, and, and let us help and set out some columns so that people have them because when he said that, I knew that it was so because you'll be surprised at individuals who won't stop to get a condom. And once it gets started, uh, the chances of it stopping are very, very slim. So we want to make sure we talk about prevention. Condoms are very effective when used correctly. We have to make sure that we put that out there because even still, as you talk about condom and condom usage, there's still a lot of individuals out here that don't know how to properly use a condom. Well, why is that? Well, we always talk about the informational gap. We always talk about the fact that there's this big gap that now exists in HIV prevention. Because we know 25 years ago, 30 years ago, everybody was talking about HIV prevention and education. And ever since the, um, um, the, the, the light on, the, on the diseases went down, a lot of the education has also stopped. And we got a lot of young people that don't think that they're at risk. Um, one, because either they're looking at their behavior as to whether or not it's something that they are or are not doing. Um, two, they're putting themselves at risk when you think about the number of partners that they have. Um, it's so vital. And this is why we talk about, we're going to get into our mentoring as well. But please give me a call here at the station, 312-1060, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Um, about the programs that we're offering. So just making sure we touch on with our HIV prevention and our condom distribution and why is it so important. Also, we're not just concerned about HIV when we start doing um, our prevention um, and our condom distribution. We're also talking about other STIs. That's other sexually transmitted infection. Do not think for one second that gonorrhea no longer exists, chlamydia no longer exists, herpes no longer exists, syphilis no longer exists. NGU. All of these things are still out there and when people get infected with these diseases it makes them more susceptible to HIV. Um, so there's a, uh, I mean it's so vitally important that we continue to talk about HIV prevention education and provide the necessary prevention methods like condoms is one of them so we're always out there with condoms and you can always come by the center. We always got condoms. They're going to be free for you, so just come by, pick up, pick them up if you need them so that if um, you do get engaged in some behavior, you'll have a condom readily available. That's vital. Also, we talk about different programs such as PrEP. What is PrEP? PrEP is a program that deals with individuals who may be putting themselves at risk when you're talking about they may be engaged in a, uh, or be in a relationship with someone who's HIV positive. When you start talking about PrEP, PrEP is another thing that helps you to reduce the risk. Remember, we're talking about risk and level of risk. It's vital that we understand that even though some things are lower in risk, they're risk. And it's like it's kind of like when you put that bullet in the gun and spin it um, and pull the trigger. You may get lucky and it don't go off, but you may not, and it may go off. So you have to start thinking about what type of um, risk are you putting yourself at and what can you do to prevent that. So please... Um, if you need an HIV test, catch us in the street. We out um, seven days a week. We're out there, or you can always come by the center, and we'll be able to provide you with that service. If you're having a, a health fair um, or something of that nature, you can always call us. Our number is three one two, uh, no no seven seven three four four five five four four five, or go on the website www.southsidehelp.org, and um, you can just give us a call. Let us know when your event is, and we're going to come out and support that event. Again, we are really 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 um, concerned with HIV prevention and education and we want people to stay healthy so that's vital. With our mentoring program, let me talk about the mentoring program that I'm affiliated with. It's called Voice to Men, Igniting Men to Lead. One of the reasons that these mentoring programs are so very vital, often talked about how um, as men, um, how we're dealt with, how we're educated, how we're prepared. So oftentimes we as men um, are made into secondary not for lack of a better word, we, we become secondary citizens. Everything that deals with men becomes secondary when the reality of it is is you should think about the fact that we remain first. Why? Because if you get the young brothers and educate them now, give them direction now, then guess what? They'll start the process of planting, not just planting seeds, but they'll become mindful of the seeds that they plant. One of the things we talk about in our mentoring program with our young brothers is we talk about the importance um, that they have. We talk about self-esteem, self-worth. Um, we also talk about what needs to happen for you to become a man. Just because you're born a male does not mean you'll become a man. That's a taught behavior. So we spend our time teaching on how to become a man. One of the things that we talk about is, is so very vital that we understand that when we talk about teaching the young brothers how to become men, what exactly does that mean? Um, 
I got to say 99% of the time that we start our programs, we got to go backwards before we can go forward. Oftentimes, we got to undo some stuff before we can begin the process of programming them correctly. Well, what does that mean? We talk about cultivation. What is cultivation? We got cultivations part one and two. These are just different things we talk about in the mentoring program to, get, to try to get our young brothers more educated as to their role and responsibility. When I talk about cultivation, I often talk about when we plant seeds. And we've done this in our mentoring group. We've given each of the young brothers a plant. With these plants, they had to plant the seed, they had to um, turn the dirt, they had to water them. And each time we come back, they would check their plant to see how well it has grown. And it'll really, it amazed me how, um, how engaged they were with these plants. And, and, and it was just really fascinating to see so many of them um, caring for their past plants with such tenderness. You know, it's like looking at these brothers plant these plants and then looking at them cultivate them. Um, and our, our, our philosophy is this. It's like you plant a seed. One, you got to look at the dirt that it's being planted in. Oftentimes when we go outside and we hear about these different um, individuals, baby mamas and baby daddies and all of that, we talk about mothers and fathers and not um, baby mamas and baby daddies. But here's the thing, most of the guys who oftentimes talk about um, what their baby mother is, and we talk about the fact that you chose her. You know, what was put in place before you made the decision to plant that seed. One of the things we do in our workshops is we talk about relationships versus sex ships. Again, we're talking about programs that are quality and that we need in our community to help strengthen our community and help them to grow. We need more men to become involved in these programs so that we can get as much out there for our young brothers as we possibly can. And again, like I say, when they um, took these plants and they put the seeds in them and, and they were very concerned with turning the dirt, they were very concerned with watering them and how well they grew. One of the things I know when you talk about relationships versus sex ships, when you turn, when you look at the soil, whether it's her or whether it's him, when you look at that soil, you got to first take the time out to say, okay, um, is this soil healthy? And if it is not, what can I do to cultivate it? Oftentimes, if you look at a patch of dirt outside and nothing's growing there, but if you take the time to break that fallow ground, if you break that hard ground, turn it over, and smash that up. Now the soil becomes a bit moist. And then you get an opportunity to dig deep and plant that seed in deep because the reality of it is the deeper the seed is planted, the deeper the roots are going to go. And the better chance that plant has of sustaining and growing straight. So one of the things we did was we showed the guys when they plants leaned over, they took a popsicle stick and stuck it in there and they wrapped the string around it. And then they plants grew straight and they grew strong. This particular lesson was vital to them because they then began to see the importance of what they did when they talk about planting seeds and cultivation and what that really means. Because I feel like if you start life here, you're probably going to take better care of life there. So these are just some of the lessons that we're teaching in our mentoring programs and why it's so very vital that we continue to get brothers to come in, sacrifice the time, um, and become part of these programs um, so that, in fact, yes, we can become more successful. Also... For the mothers to get those young brothers who um, may be in need of some guidance, get them to us. Get them to the program so that we can then begin to say, okay, this is what we should be doing as men. This is what we should be doing um, in terms of cultivation. This is what we should be doing to strengthen the relationship um, before they even becomes a part of having sex. So it's, it's vital that um, these things are taught to our young brothers and sisters. Real quick, I want to make sure I go to the PC real quick and talk about the Southside Help Center programs. It's important that you come by the center. We've got a number of different programs here, but the ones that we talk about mostly are HIV prevention and education, which is what we have here. Also, capacity building. What does capacity building consist of? We look at other individuals and other programs that may need some assistance and we look at how we can do what we can do to strengthen those programs so that we can continue to provide a service for our young people as well as um, other agencies who are providing the same type of services. Also our youth programs, our after school programs are vital. Let me, not, let me just say really quick, the reason they are so vital, um, a few weeks ago I brought on two young ladies and they did uh, a show with me and the show was talking about homework. And one of the things is, is that things nowadays are being taught so differently than when they were when we were young or in school. So it's vital that we definitely get involved in tutoring because a lot of us as parents don't know um, 
we in the, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Are you smarter than a third grader? This stuff is way different than what we remember it being. So with the Southside Health Center after school program, they have tutors there. Ms. Smith, Ms. Tasia Bell Smith is the director of that program, and she has tutors and make sure that there's somebody that can actually help these young people with that homework. So these after school programs are vital, parents, and we talk about help us to help you. It's so very important that we get those kids in structured programs so at least we know, one, what they learn, two, where they are, and we can provide a safe space for them. And that's what Southside Health Center um, has been doing for the last 30 years. So parents, if you have a child in need of after-school services, bring them by the center. The program is free. Ain't going to cost you nothing. After-school program, the program is free. Come meet Miss Bell. Talk about what it is that your kid is in need of, and hopefully we'll be able to provide that service again. Southside Health Center has been providing quality services for 30 years now, so it is very important that we continue that um, legacy and making sure that our young people are getting what they need. So take advantage of the after-school program. I can't say enough about the after-school program and how vital it is that we get our kids involved in something after school, and that way we are, um, it's less for them to do out on the streets. It's vital. Um, one of the other things we're going to be doing here um, on actually November the 22nd, we're putting it together, and it's called Project Feed. Um, and what will happen is we're going to spend that day out in the community, and we're going to be providing meals. We're going to be providing HIV prevention and education. We're also going to be providing some hygiene things as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about that on next week because it's going to be on the 22nd, but we're going to make sure that we inform everyone as to when this is going to take place so that we can get as many people out to support it also to volunteer with it um, and anybody that's want to help and, and, and you're talking about um, when we're talking about feeding our community we don't want to do this is going to be a trial pro uh, program for us so we want to um, try it out and see what it's going to look like but we're going to be looking to do this at least um, every quarter or so where we can actually not just right around Thanksgiving and, and we're grateful to be able to do it right around Thanksgiving but we want it to continue beyond Thanksgiving so we can continue to feed our community, we can continue to provide our community with um, safety, HIV prevention, education, and also we want to make sure that if there's some other things we can help our community with, we can. we also going to talk about um, our, our clinics. It's, it's vital that when we talk about these clinics that individuals know what the process is so that if in fact somebody tests as HIV positive they know what to expect and in what time frame to expect it in. So we're going to be out doing Project Feed on the 22nd as well as we're going to be doing it on the 1st and 2nd of December. We also got um, a couple of different um, other community organizations who are going to be a part of that and I'm, I'm excited about that because we get to come together as a community. We have one club uh, called Chaotic Custom um, and it's double K all day. This is a group of organizations of individuals who are so excited about being a part of giving back to our community and again if you are a non-for-profit organization or if you're some type of community organization and you want to help um, give back and, 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 and help in the community, by all means, contact us. Let us know because we're always looking for volunteers. We're always looking for individuals who want to help and who want to give. When we say the Southside Help Center, it is truly the Southside Help Center. So we're always looking for ways that we can provide some type of service for our community. If you have any questions, this is a live call-in show. Give me a call here, 312-738-1060. If you have any questions about any of the programs that we're providing as well as um, what we got going on for World AIDS Day, which will be on the second, uh, first and second. And again, we'll be in different places throughout the city all day that day provide, excuse me, providing free meals. So again, look for us. And we'll be talking about it in the next upcoming couple of weeks so that people will know where we're going to be. Um, let me just go back to this real quick because I wanted to make sure that we talked about and we covered this after school program. And again, it's free, 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 free. For more information, contact Ms. Tasia Bell. She'll make sure that you get as uh, much information about it as you need. And when I say free, it's free, it's free, it's free. Take advantage of the services, the free services, and help us to help you. Because, again, we find so many kids who um, don't have a lot to get into. And that's why they start to do things that they probably shouldn't do because there's no programs for them to get into. So please take advantage of the free programs that the center offers. And not only with that, they provide other services like they'll be doing. They'll have a drum line there. They'll have dance there. Uh, a summer program that consists of a lot of those things as well. But take advantage of those programs because, again, we want to make sure 
that our young people are getting what they need to become productive members of society. That's vital. One of the other things we do, and we're going to make sure in the next upcoming week we're going to get someone from each of our programs to come and talk about that particular program. Uh, real quickly, I want to make sure we talk about direct services. What are direct services? Because we're an HIV prevention organization, primarily, we make sure that we provide case management for HIV positive, HIV positive clients. Well, what does that mean? Not only do we have two clinics, one on 26 in Michigan, one in Hyde Park, um, again, when people test and they test HIV positive, we'll have them into uh, an appointment within 72 hours of them testing. But it's going to be so very, very important that you understand what direct services is. Well, for direct service for HIV positive clients, they'll provide you with a case manager, a doors case manager that helps you to maneuver and, and get through the system. It's going to be vital because when people test positive, they have a whole lot of things um, on their mind and, and, and a whole lot of stuff on their plate. The case managers are there to help you navigate the system, to make sure that you're getting whatever services that we have available and if other services are out there, making sure that you get those services that you need, whether it's food, clothing, housing, all of these things are very important and we make sure that our case managers are helping our clients get these services so that one, this is a problem, yes, but there's other things that we want to make sure that people are dealing with so that this can be a prioritized problem. What are we looking at? HIV prevention and education? We're looking at reducing the viral load. When we talk about community viral load, that means when we look at those individuals and we get that viral load down, now the whole community can benefit from it and be healthy. So it's vital that we get the community viral load down. And that's just talking about the number of people within our community who may be HIV positive, who don't know they're HIV positive, who's not into care. If you have not been tested, please, please, please take an HIV test. We do a, a, what is called an INSTI test. It's like one minute the test will, the results come back within one minute. So when you get on the truck, you know, you're going to be on the truck for maybe five minutes, ten minutes, just depending on the circumstances. But the reality of it is, when you get off, you're going to know what your status is. You're going to know whether you're HIV positive. You're going to know what your risks are. If you are positive, you're going to know what your next move is as far as getting into a clinic or getting an appointment. If you test negative, what should you be doing to maintain that negative status? So it's important and vitally important when we talk about HIV prevention and education that people understand it ain't all about the positive results. We have to talk about those who test negative and what are you going to do to maintain that HIV is still very, the struggle is real, and HIV is still very real, and it's still affecting us and our people at alarming rates. Um, and if I gave you some of the statistical data that we've been able to pick up over the last month or two um, dealing with HIV in our community, it, it is disturbing. So we want people to know, know your status, because one, if in fact you are positive, you know what to do to stay safe, and again, people who... Um, Negative people pose a greater threat to positive people than positive people to negative people. And that's what we always say. So that's why it's important to know your status so that you can know what you need to do to maintain a healthy quality of life. And that's really what HIV prevention and education is. That's what knowing your status is because we want you to look at what you can do to maintain a healthy quality of life and what we can do to bring our community viral load down. And that's why we talk about the different programs that we offer and how vital they are. And why is it that we need to make sure that in our community we help our community, that we make our community safe. So please, if you don't know your status, those trucks, you'll see them out on the street every single day. You're going to see the trucks. Uh, it's going to either be, we got one we call Becky, and it says uh, testing makes us stronger. And she's all over the south side of Chicago. Every day she's out there. We also got one called Benjamin. You'll see him. It's a Mercedes truck. It's got on the side of it, knock out HIV, which is what we're trying to do in the city of Chicago is knock out HIV. So with the Southside Help Center, we're really trying to make sure that we get in our community and make sure that our community maintains um, um, a, a low viral load. And hopefully at some point we can completely wipe it out through our education, through um, making sure that people are getting tested, making sure that people are getting in treatment, and making sure that everyone knows their status. So that's what we're pushing for on the 22nd, with our, right before Thanksgiving. We'll be out. We'll be out feeding people. We'll be out providing um, tests. We'll be providing um, hygiene kits and things of that nature. But all of that stuff is going to still go towards what can we do to reduce the rate of HIV infection within the city of Chicago. If you think that it no longer exists, just Google Go to the city of Chicago and you can Google what is called EpiData, Epi data, which means epidemic, epidemic, the information from the, uh, from, that the city 
takes each year they take the information or they go and they look at the number of positives that they have and then you know what communities are most impacted for instance there's a on the map there's different numbers it may be south shore it may be woodlawn it may be portland it may be austin uh it may be inglewood so there's a number of different places that um when you look at the the um, colors or whatever it is, you'll see where the HIV is uh, most affecting or the epidemic is really taking a hold. So we want to make sure that we're providing as much education to our community as possible. We want to make sure that the services we provide are quality services. So that means it's important for us to continue to stay abreast of the epidemic and what's going on with the epidemic. It's important that we stay in our community and provide the necessary information in our community and make sure that we stay healthy as a community. Again, you can always go to our website, www.southsidehealth.org, or you can come to the office. It's 10420 South Halstead. 10420 South Halsted. Um, you can call us 773 445 5445. Um, you can ask for me, Mr. Cherry, if you would like to have us come out and do some mobile testing with you. If you would like more information concerning our mentoring programs, our after school programs, you can always give us a call at the agency or go online and check out our page and see what it is that we're doing. We always got upcoming events, so check our page to see if it's something we got coming. And if you want to volunteer, Come into the office and make sure that you fill out a volunteer application so as these things happen, we can make sure we give you a call and let you know we are in need of your services. We need you to come out and help and volunteer. So if you want to give back to the community, this is a great way to do it. So please contact us at the Southside Help Center and let us know if, in fact, you want to volunteer or if something that you want to donate, you can do that. We have shelters that we're involved with, so we're donating clothes all the time. If you got some stuff, gently used, gently worn, um, and you want to make sure that it's getting into the right hands, by all means, stop by the center and drop that stuff off, and we'll make sure that it gets to the individuals who truly need it. We, again, like to thank everyone for tuning in. It's because of you that we're able to be so successful, so we thank all of our viewers, and please, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, call us at the agency, Google us, um, or either come by the office, 10420 South Halstead, and if you see one of the trucks out there, just flag us down. Um, ain't no telling what we might be doing that day, so flag us down and find out what the Southside Help Center is doing. We'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. Until we see you again, we bid you peace.